warm welcome to Podcast for Business with me, Steve Twine. Uh, Podcast for Business is all about helping businesses to share knowledge, expertise, uh, details of uh, workshops, events and seminars with the wider business community. Today's podcast is brought to you in partnership with Network B2B. If you'd like to business network in a structured and relaxed environment with groups across the UK, Network B2B is well worth a visit. If you'd like more information, check out networkb2b.co.uk. In business, it always seems the next question is, what's your goal? How are you going to enhance your profits? Where's your business going to go? Where's the growth coming from? Uh, Very rarely does anybody stop and ask the question, are you happy? Are you being fulfilled? Well, in today's podcast, I'm joined by inspirational coach Nicola Buckley. Uh, Nicola helps stressed and overwhelmed female business leaders rediscover happiness and fulfilment. I talk with Nicola next in this week's Podcast for Business. I'd like to share news about your business, event seminar or workshop. Simply email steve at stevetwynham.com. You're listening to the Business Hour podcast uh, with me, Steve Twynham. It's a pleasure. I'm going down to Devon now. I Would you believe it? How remarkable is yeah. technology? <laughs> uh, and I'm going on the line by Nicola Buckley. How are you, Nicola? I'm very, very good, thank you. I'm very excited to be here, so thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. I'm really looking forward to hearing about what you do, really, and, and your story. And because yeah. you, in, in particular, you inspire women, don't you? Yes, I work. I work with women. So I work with female business leaders uh, who are stressed and overwhelmed, who've got kind of stuck on that corporate world hamster wheel, and I help them to rediscover happiness and fulfillment whatever that is for them and also just have a bigger impact on the world and, and i love the company name strong her you yeah strong her yeah, yeah. <laughs> love it love it yes yeah I, uh, I, I found that i found that i didn't find it but i just i had this epiphany moment sat on a beach in thailand and i was probably a few drinks in i think by that point and it just kind of came to me so i was um, like oh yeah, that's very clever. <laughs> as, the th- as the things do, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, when you take time to just relax and open the mind a bit, things come exactly. in. Exactly. So before exactly. we before we before you tell me just about how you um you help people, what's what's yeah. your story? Because so you were in the corporate world, I get I yeah. see you were with you were with a ba- a major mobile phone company, weren't you? Or yes. something like that. Yeah, yeah, so, tell yeah. me that story. Oh gosh. So I had sixteen years in corporate marketing. Um, I worked for big telecoms companies and I launched multi, I ran multi-million pound launches for them. So I would be the person making sure on the day the new iPhone came out or an iPad or new pricing or whatever we were kind of launching. Everything works on the day it was meant to in the way that it was, it was supposed to. And what that meant is that I would be responsible for budgets of up to 10 million. I would be responsible for making sure everyone was trained. They knew what they were doing commercially. It stacked up. Um, we had enough stock and, and the whole kind of piece. So I would bring everything together. So I was managing virtual teams of 30, 40 people. Um, I was very good at it, um, but I just, it just wore me down over time and that passion, that fire that I had for it very early on. And I was a postgrad, I had a postgraduate diploma marketing that I did through my, um, through my corporate career. Um, and I just, I kind of fell in love with the world of marketing but that level of intensity and that level of pressure and the expectations that you put upon yourself and the way that if you make one mistake, that's kind of like your reputation gone and you have to build it back up and the competition from your peers um, and the lack of control over your own destiny, if you like, and the way that your career path was kind of laid out for you and everyone had a better idea than you actually had was just, it just all became too much for me. So as my career took off, um, unfortunately, my marriage really suffered. So I ended up separating from my husband and eventually getting divorced. After I came out of that, um, my um, I suffered severely with depression and anxiety. So I had about um, two years where my biggest achievement for a day was getting out of bed. Um, wow. And it was just, I some days I would hold my breath in the hope that I just wasn't going to wake up because it was just too painful. And I was awful to myself 
Um, I very, very, uh, my anxiety was really bad, so I couldn't eat. So I lost a lot of weight. Um, I was still training really hard. Um, but coming out of that was kind of like a free stage process for me. Um, and I'd left corporate world by that point. I was setting up a boot camp business. Um, and that brought its own kind of pressures. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I found the journey back to me was also the journey that created my business. And I think most people that are in a business that's very heart led, it's their story that's, that's inspired them to then go out and help other people who are in a similar situation. So mine was like a three step recovery process, if you like. So the first stage was I started to truly understand how to fuel myself and I fell back in love with food. Mm -hmm. I'd been, um, had very disordered eating for quite a long time. Um, and I taught myself about nutrition and then I invested in working with a nutrition company and I became a nutritional therapist with them. So completely fell in love with the power of food to heal, to have energy, to feel, have a clear head. Um, and just to, just to really love cooking again and love knowing what was going to help me to feel good. So that was the first part of my kind of recovery. The second part then was I, um, I fell in love with strength training um, and I fell in love with CrossFit particularly. So I walked into CrossFit gym. Um, I'm pretty much a bit of a pervert. <laughs> I, like, <laughs> I like men. I like men that are easy on the eye. Um, and I walked into CrossFit gym. There was five men with their tops off. And I was like, I want to do, I spend a lot of time with them doing whatever they're doing. Um, so then I became a CrossFit coach. I became a British weightlifting coach. Um, I also was, became a regional weightlifting champ. And that wow. just made me see that actually... Um, confidence comes from like, yes, knowing yourself and mindset, but it also comes from feeling physically strong. Mm -hmm. And I'd never felt so physically strong in my life. And also the way that it just pushed me to be able to do new things that I just never thought I was capable of was just so inspiring that I just, I became really kind of addicted to it and it just kind of it overtook my life. Um, and I suffered from burnout. Um, so then the third part of my journey was as I was kind of setting up my, um, bootcamp business, I also started to think, well, actually I, I kind of struggle with how I feel about myself. I never feel enough. Um, and out of that, I found, um, one of my mentors now, a guy called Dax Moy, who's an incredible man. He'd created something called mind map. Mind map is effectively answering the question. I know what I need to do, but I don't seem to be able to do it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's what I've now, um, I've put my overlay on it to specifically work with female leaders that is now all the noggin knowledge that I teach and coach which is the neuroscience of change like how to make change in a brain friendly way that lasts forever um, and that stuff is so powerful because it's the logic of emotion so I'm a very logical lady I've been in corporate world so I'm quite analytical and logical but I'm also incredibly emotional and a huge empath right. those two <laughs> together um the noggin knowledge stuff is amazing because it allows you to understand your emotions. It allows you to know why you might comfort eat or why you might self-sabotage or why you're so critical and harsh on yourself or why you're not feeling enough. Even if you've got a big director role in a big corporate, you still don't feel enough. And there's always a brain, there's always a brain process or mechanism that sits behind it. So now my focus is, is purely the mindset work and I help these amazing female leaders to, step out of that hamster wheel and the overwhelm and the stress and the anxiety goes with it. And they're never feeling enough. It's they're always, their pattern is always doing more to feel enough yet. It never works. So there's always the next qualification or the next, or the bigger job, the promotion, we're going to move to a new business. Um, and it never, it never brings them happiness. So I help them to create time and space to make their day to day better. First of all, um, then we move into doing really deep self identity work, which is five layers of self identity. I teach and coach, out of that comes clarity and confidence on who they are and therefore what they want. And the final part is then we help them. I help them to find what is going to be fulfillment for them. Um, and that's kind of like a six month process that I work with them through. Wow. Um, and that's now what I have the honor of doing day in, day out, which I absolutely love. So I do that through VIP coaching retreats, um, group programs. Um, and I do some 99 pound call clarity and confidence breakthrough calls, which is just like a foot in the door to help shift make an immediate shift with how someone's feeling so wow. yeah absolutely i adore what i do i what just I love it it's my purpose so, yeah you're, <laughs> well yeah that wonderful meaning and purpose thing so when when you left the corporate yeah. world was that that yeah. must have been quite a liberating feeling then was it when you said goodbye or? <laughs> it's kind of both really it was kind of both i'll tell you the story of um 
So the day that I left, um, I was incredibly nervous. I, I kind of decided. So I was working for one particular big corporate I'd gone to. I thought was going to be cutting edge, very techn- technology advanced. None of that at all. It was very disorganized behind the scenes. It was a bit of a shambles. If I turned up for a meeting with an agenda, I was an absolute superstar. And it's like, it's just an agenda. It's quite normal. Um, and it was just, it was just actually quite archaic kind of behind the scenes. And I just, I felt like I didn't really fit in. I'd, I'd never fitted in in corporate world. But the actual day that I was going in to um, hand in my notice, um, I got real wobbles in the morning. So I ended up ringing my mum. Okay. Mum said, you know that you need to do this. You know that you want to do this. You know that your heart's not in that anymore. Um, and she said one thing that made me go in and, and hand in my notes. That was like, we've got your back. We're going to support you. We're going to, we're here for you no matter what happens. And that was so, that wow. just gave me the confidence just to go, do you know what? What's the worst that can happen? I can always go and get another job later on if I needed to. And that was seven years ago. Um, but I remember that day. So I'd booked a call with my boss or a meeting with my boss at 9 a.m. I was like, right, I want to get it done, out the way. Um, he then had the worst day ever. Like some results were coming back and they weren't very great. So he was being grilled by board directors. And he just, I remember he walked into the meeting room. He was six foot six, <laughs> sat down at this table. And he just seemed to shrink into like this just tiny version of himself. And he said, right, Nick, give me good news. I've been grilled all day. I've had the worst day. I, you always give me good news. Give me something good news. <laughs> I was just like, oh no. I was like, I'm not going to do that today actually and I got out an envelope and I pushed it across the table to him he said it's not what I think it is and it's like yes <laughs> so, oh. poor guy yeah. um, and it was it was the feeling of leaving corporate world was kind of a combination of probably the most excited I'd ever been and the most terrified yeah um, and it's just it's a really interesting thing now because the women that I teach and coach they they really push themselves they're always pushing past their comfort zone and we talk about actually physiologically excitement and fear is the same thing. Like the symptoms, if you like, are exactly mm. the same thing. So then it comes down to how you label it. And it's kind of, it was back then I didn't know any better. And it's probably like, I, I think I, back then I probably thought it was just, I'm just scared beyond belief. But actually now looking back, I was probably excited as well as it was probably that combination of the two. What a what a great! I can just I've just got this picture of you sat there on that day going with that envelope going. Yeah. Should uh, should I do it? Should I not do it? Yeah. Should I do yeah. it tomorrow? <laughs> I've never seen a six six foot six guy look any smaller. Oh my honestly. word! God, we used to be God. like we we looked like Gando from Fro- Frodo. We were like around <laughs> meetings together because I I like to wear flat shoes to work back then because I was always busy kind of well. meeting things and moving around and yeah. So Gando from Frodo no more. Oh, lovely. So, so Nick, well, why why do you think we're so hard? It's so hard to be ourselves yeah. then, or you know, to be yourself. Yeah, I I think because we live we live very much externally now, don't we? So if you think about your phones, think about social media, um, and just that constant comparison, looking what everyone else is doing, um, everyone else's life looks better than yours. Um, it's advertising we should look a certain way we should be buying a certain product you should have a certain phone be driving a certain car and all of that is just external just noise if you like Mm -hmm. and that's where our attention is because we've lost the ability to connect to ourselves we've lost the ability to just sit and just be without being on a phone without distracting ourselves with something so what that means is that it's very hard to know yourself when you're constantly living externally knowing yourself comes from living an internally led life Mm -hmm. and internally led life is where you connect your heart when you listen to your feelings when you have that awareness and understanding and the simplest way that i can explain this is just through something that i use with all my clients which is i get them to tune it to get them to dial down on the external noise and i get them to turn up the volume of the internal voice and i call that voice the cup of tea voice the so if you were sat with me, yeah. you were sat here with me now, Steve, and we were, and I just said, what do you want to drink? You would know immediately what you needed, what you wanted to drink. Um, and that is the voice of you saying, this is what I want. This is what I need. And it's, it's tuning back into that voice for, yes, that sort of thing, but it gets bigger and bolder. So it would then be about potentially about a career move or about your relationship or, but because we've tuned out of it, because we're scared of judgment, because we're scared we want to fit in, we're seeking permission, we're seeking approval. You don't know yourself when you're constantly trying to look for approval and permission from other people. So the first step to coming back to know yourself 
and live a life that's internally led, the first step is you've got to tune back into your own voice, the voice of what you want. And, and think of it as your cup of tea voice. If you sit down and you think, what do I want to drink? That's the voice that you need to tune back into. That's the voice that you need to curate and nurture and let it grow and develop. Um, a really super simple way to start doing that, get a journal mm-hmm. um, and just start writing down, open it every morning, write for five minutes and just ask yourself this one simple question. Journaling doesn't need to be complicated. It's simply just how do I feel today? That tunes into your subconscious. That's just a flow of consciousness. That's your, the thinking you're not normally aware of is suddenly before you're on a piece of paper. And that has a huge, huge impact. Um, I can go, I can go with that. I, I, I love just doing little, uh, 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 they're in another room, my journals, you know, and you got, and you, <laughs> yeah, okay. Right. It was interesting. I, I, I did some work with the company and, and I actually yeah. said to the, um, uh, it was a project manager in the company yeah. and they were very task orientated. And I said that, why don't you get the team a journal? Yeah. And, and you looked at me as though I'd, lost my marbles and i went because you're so task orientated why don't we just ask them how did they feel about today just get them to yeah. make a note what went well today how can we do, get yeah. them to think you know so 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 i love that and i guess you know because there's a lot of work in the we, we try and fix people but the answers all lie within don't they oh hugely you're absolutely yeah i couldn't agree more with you, you know. we're, again it's that we're so used to asking for other people's opinion we google everything we possibly can like what do we do before we just say to someone oh just google it don't know just google it before we'd have to search inside for our own answers wouldn't we and we've just lost that faith if you don't tune into your cup of tea voice if you're not used to listening to it you just you're going to struggle to find your own answers yet my work as a coach is is i i love my work it's my purpose and my passion but I'm not a mentor. I'm not going to sit and tell you what to do. If you ask my opinion, I'll give you an opinion, but that's not the basis of coaching. The basis of coaching is very much, first of all, support and creating a safe place that someone mm-hmm. can share how they're feeling. The second part then is, is questions, instinctive, intuitive questions that are going to guide them to their own light bulbs and realizations. And I kind of, I call it bringing my clients back home to who they are. Right. Okay. And, and a bit about that helping to find that clarity, isn't it? About yeah. just, you know, and, and values. Yeah. Because we often, we don't, coming back to that point, you're saying we don't think, we don't step back and think about these things. We're, no. We, we, we carry on on this treadmill and we just carry on, carry on. And then yeah. we, we, I can go with your burnout story. I had a, I had a burnout yeah. scenario many years ago as well. And you think, what on earth is going on? You have those moments. Uh, well, well, if you, some people do, some people don't. They just carry on, don't they? And just yeah. Carry on. So, how do you help them? How do you help people sort of get that clarity and confidence? Do you work through a value? Um, yeah. So we work through five five layers of self identity. So I'll just I'll quickly take you through them. But so the reason that it's so brilliant and why it's so um, so so powerful is clarity and confidence comes from knowing yourself. And clarity and confidence, once you know yourself, means that you then know what you want. So that is then, you'll still be judged or you might still be seeking approval permission, but actually you're doing it with something. You're going to be judged anyway, so why not be judged for being who you are and doing what, you, what, what you're what you meant to do in the world? So the brilliant thing about this framework is that it gives someone clarity and confidence forever. They can mm-hmm. always come back to it. So the first layer of it is, is values. Values are your anchor in yourself. So all my clients end up with three values that they live their life by. They make decisions by when they align to it more, they feel better when they're not aligned to it is why it's why they struggle. And it just, it's Steve Jobs quote of joining up the dots of your life backwards and forwards. It it, suddenly everything in your world makes sense and they're so powerful. And that's how you show up in the world. That's how you make decisions. That's how people fit with you or they don't fit with you. All of that comes back to values. It's absolutely, it's the biggest thing that I teach and coach. It's just such a light bulb. And, and Nicola, do, do some people have a bit of a surprise when you've actually gone through that? Because they probably thought the values were something else and the, they're not that at all. Yeah. So for a lot of ladies I work with are incredibly logical. But for, I think, pretty much every single client I've ever had in some format, one of their values will be love. Mm-hmm. And it's a sudden realisation that these amazing ladies that have done so well being very happy head led and being in doing mode constantly and always working and always on they're like there's this whole other side to them that they haven't really discovered that is emotional and it's empathetic and it's compassionate and they knew that was there but they almost saw it as weak or Mm -hmm. being 
overly vulnerable or they've maybe I know that I was told in corporate world you're a bit over emotional you can overreact sometimes and now it's part of my what I do is I'm an empath so I just I feel the emotions um and it's sometimes they're completely different than they realize but it gives them that brilliant structure to understand themselves yeah okay um and that that head and heart one's really interesting for a lot of them that are very analytical there's something like I've got this whole other side of me that I just thought was weak Mm -hmm. is actually incredibly powerful like there's nothing as a leader if you you have the head part and the analytical part and logic if you bring that together with the empath empathetic understanding compassion that's a huge part of what women can bring to leadership roles huge I, I'm smiling because I, when you said about you showed too much emotion, I, I, I was. Wondering, <laughs> I was told I was over emotional. You know, that's what said reacting. to me. When, well, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right for you, Steve, because you, you you're in touch with your feminine side, aren't you? And I'm, <laughs> I think I think I know I think I know what you mean, <laughs> you know. And it, when it was, it was compassion, you know, and yeah. that kind of thing, not just going down that hard-headed route, you know, and all that yeah. kind of thing. So I found that quite amusing when they said yeah. that. But uh, there you go. So you've got those. You, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I'm just going to say, like, the work that Brenny Brown does on vulnerability is incredible. And right, just okay. if anyone's if anyone's scared of feeling how they feel, like feelings are simply feedback. They're there as guideposts. They're there to show you something that you need to pay attention to. So I would say to anyone, if you're new to this journey, go and watch The Power of Vulnerability, 15-minute TEDx talk with Brenny Brown. She'll help you to understand why it's not weak, um, it's not over-emotional, you're not being a girl, none of that stuff. You're actually just you're sharing with the world how you feel, and that's a brave, brave thing to do. And that's how this world will become. That's how we will become more connected again as people. That's how we're going to become just a happier, more connected population of people. Cause we're not at the moment. We're the most depressed. We're the most <laughs> overweight. We're the most unhappy we've ever been as a general population. And it's and crazy. Our part to it is emotional. And we have so many things that were supposed to make our life simpler and easier. Yeah. Hey, and we're more stressed out than we've exactly. ever been. Us, what's exactly. going on? You know, what's going on? <laughs> So in terms of those steps, and what else do yeah. you do around that? Then? Okay, so the second step then is we look at their beliefs. Mm-hmm. So for clarity and confidence, a huge part of this, of knowing yourself to have that always clarity and confidence, um, is your beliefs. So if, you're, if your values are your compass guiding you in the right direction, let's use that analogy, your um, beliefs are your map of the world. So if you're not where you want to be in life, if there's an area of your life that you're struggling with, there will be some beliefs there that don't serve you anymore. Um, beliefs tend to be inherited from when we're children. So they mm-hmm. tend to be formed in our very early years. So you probably have the voice of your parents kind of ringing in your ears. You probably maybe a teacher, maybe <laughs> someone that's hugely influenced when you were growing up. Um, and you're living now as an adult with those childhood beliefs that don't serve you. So the beliefs of not being enough, the beliefs maybe that someone told you once that you were stupid. Um, okay. um, maybe the beliefs that you're, you're stupid or you're not intelligent or you can't, you know, um, if you earn, if uh, you have a certain amount of money, it's because you're dishonest, you know, all those old beliefs. Um, and the way that you start to identify your beliefs, you just sit, you think of an area of your life you're struggling with. You sit down and you write down your beliefs about that area and beliefs work in a tabletop structure or a table structure. So there will be an overarching belief. So that might be the belief that you're not enough. Mm-hmm. And then there'd be supporting beliefs. So that might be the belief that, um, in relationships like you're not the one um you're a bit submissive in a relationship and you kind of let the other person lead for example or in your career you're too scared to ask for a pay rise or you don't think you should go for that promotion because you're not enough so the overarching belief is not enough that is a huge huge part of clarity and confidence okay and and three uh number three is uh your story Mm -hmm. so it's your your story of how you've come to be the person you are today so that is brilliant for your clarity and confidence because it's that your your story is what shapes you. It's how you get to be who you are today. And it's an amazing exercise just to sit down and go through the chapters of your life and understand how they've helped you to become who you are. So what have you what are you not accepting about your past? Where maybe have you not taken responsibility? Um, what are your lessons that you've learned? What's shaped you? What are you grateful for? Um, and it was really interesting yesterday actually with a VIP client. Um, and she, when she first started working with me, she had, she was signed off work for a month of burnout. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've got to the point now where we've gone through this really deep self identity work. She's much happier day to day. 
she's not just doesn't want to keep climbing the corporate ladder she actually wants to have more time she wants to have more balance in her life she's recognized all of this she's just done an amazing job I'm very very proud of her um but she was saying she's at the point now where part of her story is her burnout and she's incredibly grateful for it because it made her stop it made mm-hmm. her sit up and take action it made her find me and work and invest time and effort to work with me that's fun. It's fantastic, isn't it? When uh, and what you know to to actually recognise that as well and see that that's probably credits everybody that's working together on that. That's that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Was, okay. So, so where, where, do you, where do you go after that then? Yeah. So then we go from story. We go to language. Mm-hmm. So language is obviously huge. So um, how you talk to yourself every single day it's <laughs> quite, it's the dripping tap effect that we think it doesn't have an impact, but it's a huge impact. So your um, your thoughts um, create your beliefs. Oh, sorry, your beliefs create your thoughts that then create your language. Your language tends to then shape your actions and then that creates your reality. So, um, and then that goes around because that you're, you're seeing evidence of the life that you've created based on your thoughts. Mm-hmm. And then you, it's rewired back in that, well, actually, that's what we think. Therefore, that's, that's the life that we're going to have. So your life is never bigger than the language that you use and the thoughts that you have. Yeah, so no. language is absolutely huge. So if you're telling yourself, we have 60,000 thoughts a day as women. Interestingly, about 40,000 as men. <laughs> I don't know what that says about you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, I mean, I mean switching the feminine side, I might be in between. <laughs> you might be 50,000. So. <laughs> um, but if those thoughts are always negative, if you're always hard on yourself, if you're always putting yourself down, um, it's just it's going to be very difficult for you to come come past that unless you get some help, unless you get some support, unless you're willing to start doing the work on yourself. Wow. Um, and it's just so liberating. So I get my clients to look at the top five words for the day. What were those words? What were they? Were they positive? Were they negative? How can they start to shift if they're negative? How do they start to shift them to neutral? Because you don't shift straight from negative to positive. And then eventually when they're neutral, how do we make them into positive? Right. Okay. So great. This is, have you ever read... Um, uh, some of uh, Michael Heppel's books. Yes, yes. Yes. I like and, his stuff. Yeah, and um, I was talking to Michael last week, and well, like him yeah. being brilliant you, uh, being brilliant you, he's got stuff about self-talk. Yeah. And how you huge, change something huge, from, so from I'm tired to I could do with more energy. Just, yeah. You're not lying to yourself. No. You just it's, change. Language is huge. Yeah, yeah. it's brilliant. Yeah. Oh. And also, don't, don't make it so far ahead of where you are that you don't believe it. Your brain, your brain works in a way that change has to be slow and steady to kind mm. of bed in and for the brain to see that that change is you're still safe. So it's not going to snap you back to where you were, which effectively was what self-sabotage is. Um, so say for example, affirmations, I think they're great in a lot of ways, but if your affirmation is I love myself and you look in the mirror and you just don't feel, you don't even like yourself saying to yourself 10 times a day, you love yourself just not going to work. Mm-hmm. So it should be it should be based on where you are. So, for example, it could be I'm starting to care about myself more and more or I'm on a journey to know myself and like myself more. And yeah. even that shift in energy is going to be huge, but it meets you where you are. It kind of doesn't step you on so far that you're just like, well, that's yeah. not true. What's that point? Yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah. Just, I'm just kidding myself or I'm just exactly. lying, lying to myself. Awesome. Exactly. Aw- awesome stuff. So. Nicola, how, how can people find out yeah. more about you then? How can they get in touch with you? Um, they can come and join. There's a couple of things, um, a couple of ways they can get in touch with me. So I'm on um, Facebook. I obviously have to be on social media now. So I'm on Facebook as Nicola Buckley. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a free group on there called the Strong Her You community. For it. So it's for women in business and it's my um, noggin knowledge tips and hacks <laughs> and, and simple ways of coming back home to who you are and feeling clear and confident. Um, I've got a link. I'm very, um, I'm very busy on LinkedIn. So come and join me on LinkedIn. Um, and also I am running a five day challenge on the 15th of July, which is from confusion to clarity. So it's for women in business who at the moment are feeling a bit stressed and overwhelmed. Um, they're kind of asking themselves, is this it? They have a lot, but they're not, they just keep asking, is this my life? Is this all that I've have? Um, and we bring them back five, five days. We're going to do five different steps to take them out of take them past confusion and back to feeling clear and confident and just passionate about their lives again. And how are you doing that? Are you doing it via Facebook, via Zoom? Yeah, webinar, so or Facebook, whatever? Facebook group. Yeah. Okay. So Facebook group. So get daily little tasks. I'm then in the group, take them through it. And then we're going to have 
evening couple of chats to kind of go through everything that we've done that day so yeah it's gonna be good i'm excited about it awesome you've got plenty going on then haven't you yes yeah so yeah. just give us the website again if they want to get in touch with you oh, so the website as well is www.stronghertu.com okay um, linkedin and facebook is nicola buckley and my facebook group is strong Her you community awesome we've covered a fair bit there yeah, but that's been, I've, I've loved it today. Thank you so much, yeah, Steve. It's a fair, fair bit. And, um, you know, by all means, get, get in touch. You know, I always, you know, it's easy sometimes to sort of not deal with these things, uh, become yeah. that, become aware of these things. And I also, you know, there are people out there like Nicola who can help. It's not yeah. a sign of weakness. Not at all. Not at all. You know, we I, all, I still have coaches now. So I work you know with a business what? coach, I have my own coach, so I, I am a coach, but I, I would feel hypocritical if I did it on my own because I believe in coaching. So. I can I can hold my hands up to that. <laughs> you know, yeah. we work with people and uh, I need your help. Come on, let's let's yeah. have a chat. And uh, and I, I've got to share this because I remember working with Michael yeah. Heppel many, many, well, about 12 yeah. years ago now. And uh, I, when I interviewed Michael, we touched on it. And uh, I, I, I won't say he saved my life. That's a bit dramatic. But I was going to go down a direction and I met with a yeah. one-to-one with Michael and it was quite straight talking. I'll put it that way. <laughs> well, why are you going down that way? Yeah. And I just stepped back for what seemed ages till I went, it's a very good question, Michael. Why am I going down that way when yeah. I should be going this way? And he went, you've got it, you know. And that was me contacting Michael and say, can we meet for a coffee? Yeah, yeah. You know, not me it's sat there going, I know all the answers. We don't do it. No. They it's are, it's a there? really brave thing. It's a really brave thing to ask for help, but it's not weak. Um, it's not, you're not a failure. Um, it's just asking for help, I believe now, is one of the strongest things you can do. Um, and if, you, if in doubt, if you're sat there and you just don't know where to start, ask for help. There's loads of coaches out there. If, you, if anything I've said resonate with you, please get in touch. I'd hate to think if anyone sat at home, like my, my mission is I don't want any woman to go home and they've had a big day of work um, and they've given a lot to everyone else and they go home and they just feel like they're not enough. They feel like they're a failure. They ask themselves like, is this it? Is it all my life is? Everyone mm. deserves more than that. You deserve to live a full, happy life and you deserve to be able to share your magic more and more with the world. Fantastic. What a way to end yeah, that's that quite good. That, that was, that, you know, that was how you'd got that written down somewhere, <laughs> but you haven't. That was, that was awesome. Honestly, Neil, thanks oh, for joining thank me you. today. That was awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I've loved today. Thank you, Steve. Love your energy. Brilliant. A big thank you for taking the time out to listen to Podcasts for Business. Podcasts for Business, all about helping businesses share knowledge, expertise, details of events, workshops and seminars. If you'd like to get in touch, you'd like to feature your business or let me know about an event, all you need to do is simply email steve at stevetwinem.com. Also check out podcastforbusiness.co.uk. Podcast for Business is produced and presented by Steve Twynham. Copyright applies. Like to share news about your business? event seminar or workshop simply email steve at stevetwinem.com